Good morning from Los Angeles and afternoon and early evening to everyone else out there. Of course, this is the global press conference for Tom Clancy's Without Remorse, which launches globally on Amazon Prime Video April 30th. I'm Kelly Carter, senior entertainment reporter for ESPN's The Undefeated, and I'll be asking questions that you all have submitted from around the world. Thank you very much for that. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to bring in the talented team who brought this movie together. And I want to start with director Stefano Solima. And of course, the stars of this movie, Jodie Turner-Smith, Lauren London, Brett Gelman, Coleman Domingo, and Michael B. Jordan. Welcome, everyone. Thank you guys for doing this. Thank you. Hey, what's Thank going you. on, Kelly? Thank you for having us. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, I want to start by going around the Zoom and asking everyone this first question, which, quite frankly, I think everyone in your industry, I'm sure, has been pondering for the last 12 months. And the first question is, this move, the movie world has been turned upside down. A lot of movies that may have played in theaters are going directly on platforms like Amazon Prime. The question from this first reporter is, do you think that can help a film to find an audience? Why or why not? And why don't we start with you, Michael? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think it's it's given access, you know, to to films that, you know, you know, quite possibly you wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't have an opportunity to go see. You know, I think certain films are obviously intended to be shot and 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 played on a movie theater in a theater. Uh, but I think, you know, the evolution right now, you know, we're, we're in an evolving time where, uh, you know, obviously with the pandemic this last year, uh, had everything, you know, with the shift and we, we, we were, you know, victims of that as well in the sense of trying to figure out, you know, where were we going to pivot, you know, how we, how will we get our movie out to the masses so everybody had an opportunity to watch it and see it. So luckily enough that we were able to land a, you know, a place like Amazon to, uh, to, to house this film. And, and, uh, I think, um. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, it's the evolution. I think it's going to be a healthy balance between the two. You know, I think, you know, there's something to sitting at home and being able to have instant access to like the movies that you want to see. But then I think there's also something to go into the theater and having that movie theater experience as well. So it's it's going to be a, a nice little healthy balance, I think, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Coleman? Because this is at least the second film I know that you've done that's going direct to an audience. Um, how have you found this experience as a as a creator? I think just like, just as Michael said, it feels great to have that accessibility that people can can watch it and view it when they want to watch it. Hopefully, you know everyone has been setting up their their uh, their adjacent bedrooms into screening rooms, so now I think they can get the full experience. You know what I mean? I feel like especially for a film like this, you want to see Michael and and Jody and all their glory on the big screen, so you can do it in your own. You know, and I think that's I think that's awesome. Yeah. Stefano, as a director, you know, what has this moment been like for you? I mean, I know that this film was shot to be seen on the big screen, but but what does it do for you that perhaps you're even going to get a bigger audience for this film than initially mm -hmm. you may have gotten? I think that the movie is a son of our times. I mean, in a time like this, when, in which we are facing, uh, the, the movie business is facing a, a, a crisis like never before. I think that this solution uh, may save uh, a lot of films. And also, if I may, gives to the audience in this particular moment that it's uh, sad that the people, the audiences is forced home, and to give them as a, a sort of gift, a film of, uh, with uh, such scope and uh, cinematic uh, complexity. And we need to be thankful to that. Mm, absolutely. Right uh, Jody. how about yourself? What are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think as has kind of already been said, what the benefit is, is that with everybody taking this in in the comfort of their own homes, you know, I think there's that, that means many more eyes on it. That means, you know, watching things. Oh, this, it's a way for us to be together now, really be together. Like when movies come out now, you go on Twitter and you see that like everybody's watching it and talking about it and live tweeting and just, there's a kind of different sense now of community of taking in films mm. because we're not going to the cinema and you know, everybody's at home to do it. 
and we can't really yeah. go and see each other and high five each other. Oh my god! Does anybody <laughs> whose AirPods just always fall out of their ear? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, last but not least, you know, Lauren and Brett, what are, what are your thoughts about that, too? Because because what Jody said is correct. I mean, it has been really fun to kind of w- group watch these these films and live tweet with everyone in a way that maybe we wouldn't have been able to do because you can't have your phones on when you're in the theater. So what do you guys <laughs> what do you guys think about that? I think it's important, too, um, that we as artists are always in the flow of how times change. And that we must be like water and flow with it. But I also think it gives everyone the opportunity to watch the movie multiple times, um, as many times as you want with just the click of your thumb. Um, I, I know I had that experience with my kids when um, a, a movie came out recently and my kids wanted to watch it at least three times a day. And I know I gave a lot of money <laughs> to this particular film because it just gives you an opportunity to be... Um, align with the times and be able to have it right there on demand. Absolutely. Uh, Brett? Yeah. I I mean, jumping off what Jody said about community too, and what Lauren said, uh, you know, when we come out of this, I think, you know, I'm echoing what everybody said. uh, There's not too much to add to, but you echo as we come out of this, that community will lend itself hopefully to the theater and being out and that what we've learned while we've been locked in, will then continue on in a fuller way when we can be around each other in mm-hmm. a safe way again. Um, and and also get everybody more excited about movies, you know? And uh, I just think it, it's been great to see the excitement around this film. And that, yeah. like Stefano said, how it is this gift, this treat that we're giving people in the midst of, you know, all this, this, this horrible year. <laughs> uh, no, and, and they have been, it has been a treat and this film most certainly will be yet another treat. Thank you guys all so much for creating that. Uh, Stefan, I want to go back to you. Uh, the question is, can you talk about how your experience as a war zone camera operator has informed mm. you as a filmmaker, particularly in a film like Without Remorse? I mean, it's like, what you when you work in a, a war zone uh, mm-hmm. uh, area, you have to, the responsibility to report the the reality you are uh, living in a, in a, in a truthful and respectful way, mm-hmm. and uh, and most of all, I think that you cannot dirty uh, the reality with your own point of view. So it's like sort of you don't want to judge what you are experiencing mm-hmm. because this is up to the audience that is going to judge on their own. And then I feel this is the, the spirit of the objective uh, reporting. And I feel it, that in the movie translate more or less in, uh, in the same uh, way. You know, I, I, I need to inform, to study a lot, to know everything about the world that I'm going to portray it. And when I put together, or when I work on a character, I don't want to never to judge him. So I try to leave this pleasure to the, to the audience. So it's a way to be close to the story, to your character, but at the same way, in the same time, to be respectful a step ahead. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, This next question is for Michael B. Jordan, the producer. And the question is, this film is the first action movie from your production company. What can you tell us about producing this film through Outlier compared uh, to its previous features? Uh, That's a good question. I think, you know, just being involved from the absolute beginning, you know, to to, to the end, uh, I think it was very hands-on in a way of uh, how to build out stunts you know, what the process you know, would be and, you know, having experienced producers like, you know, Akiva um, and Liz Raposo, you know, another, and another uh, you know, people who really have been through the process before that worked on high, uh, at, uh, high stakes action movies and really following their lead on how to like package together. Okay, we're going to do this uh, intense, you know, 
an airplane crash that, you know, is going to, and usually and working with the visual, uh, visual effects supervisor mm -hmm. to work out that sequence and how exactly we're going to practically shoot it. All right, we're going to use the crane on this shot and we need water tanks and this and that. So it was like, it was just going through the process of, of building that out. You know, it was, it was a learning curve for myself. So I walk away from this movie um, with more knowledge and experience and how to put those, uh, how to put those, uh, those, those sequences, those movies together. So, um, yeah, I, I was, uh, yeah, I, I know when to shut up and listen, you know what I mean? And learn. So I was a sponge on this one. And, uh, I think, I think we walked away with the, with something that we could be really happy about. Oh, love to hear it. You know, I want to bring, uh, bring in Jody here and have you both talk a little bit about the relationship between John Kelly and Karen Greer. We got a lot of questions about their chemistry and the uniqueness of it because it's not an on-screen romantic chemistry like we might normally see between a man and a woman. It's really one of professional courtesy and admiration. Can you both kind of talk a little bit about creating that dynamic on film? Yeah, you know, I think it is so important. You know, every time you speak to somebody, your relationship is that is 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 alive in that conversation. And whether you're actually talking to them about something that is concerning your relationship or not, it's, you know, the trust that you have, the respect that you have, the love that you have is always alive when you speak to someone that you have relationship with. And mm -hmm. it always felt important to me and to Michael that we just try to infuse that in our scenes, even when we're coming and we're, we're butting heads. And even when it's, I, I'm really not understanding mentally what he's going through, but I'm trying to be there for him, like all of that. And, and especially when, you know, it came to sort of giving him this, what I give him that kind of lets him decide to go, okay, I'm gonna take these actions. So, you know, and I think it's really wonderful and really brave to have a relationship where it is just talking about and really displaying platonic love, you know what I mean? Which I think is the purest form of love that there is, mm -hmm. you know, and these two are deeply bound by that. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Anything you wanted to add to that, Michael? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, you know, finding the balance, and I guess putting my producer hat back on, you know, yeah. me, you know, and Stefano, you know, and, and Akiva, you know, we, we, you know, we really, you know, wanted to work through finding that balance between, uh, you know, camaraderie uh, and, 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 you know, and that brother or sister relationship that they had, you know, to, to make sure that, you know, the audience understood that, uh, you know, that it was, it was deeper than, you know, and didn't want anybody to be misunderstood by the relationship, by the dynamic. You know, I think we wanted to be really clear that they loved each other, but it was like, we got your back no matter what, you know, like in through thick and thin, I'm not going to leave you behind. You know, we're, you know, I'm, I'm, this might get me in trouble, but I'm still going to give you this. And I'm still, I still have to look out for your best interest because you're not actually all the way thinking clearly at this moment. So to be able to really define those dynamics and relationships, but also be very respectful to John's relationship with Pam, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and we didn't want anybody to assume or try to forward think that the relationship will go down a road that it wasn't supposed to. We want to make sure we honor, you know, John's motivation throughout this movie. And that was something that we kept a close eye on as we developed those scenes. And, uh, you know, I think, I think we found a pretty good balance between the two. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things I really loved about the film is that as much as an action film, it, it's really, as it is, it's really a love story. And so I want to bring Lauren in um, now and, and, you know, and ask this question because the relationship between John and Pam is really at the center of this film. How did uh, the two of you build that relationship in order to make it feel as natural as it felt and hold the emotional weight that really was carried throughout the course of the film? Uh, you know, I think that you know, you bring your life experiences to your art. And um, I always love artists that work like that. And so I try my best to be honest in that way. And I think just being a mother and um, a partner and um, experiencing love to the degree that I was able to experience it, I brought that, you know, tenderness and vulnerability to his character. And uh, Michael being a really good friend of mine before, we ever worked together made it really comfortable and respectful and gave me held a space for me to be able to be so vulnerable in this character at the time of my life that I was in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, anything you wanted to add about about building that that partnership, uh, Michael? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, everything Lauren just said, you know, it was something that, um, you know, 
us as actors and artists, you know, being able to to have opportunity to express ourselves through our work is sometimes the only release that we can really get in that type of way. And I, we were so lucky as as a project and and and, and as a scene partner uh, to you know for Lauren to be so you know generous you know to to you know help me personally you know get through and understand a mind state and some of those emotional beats of what a person would be going through um you know in, in certain situations so i think it just added mm -hmm. so many layers uh to the performance across the board and also was my driving force throughout the movie as well so it it, it it's something that you know you know sometimes in movies you just get those you know those x factors that that special whatever it is you know to that that just you know makes things just pop the way it is and and lauren for us was, was definitely one of those things oh yeah. thank you and, and I, I real quick i want to add that we did have very open conversations about grief and um just what it feels like to lose someone um so tragically and so soon so we had i think those conversations really helped um the movement of our characters and their relationship. Completely, completely. Yeah, completely. it's it's evident that the payoff was was really this beautiful creative piece. So thank you guys both for that that vulnerability and for sharing that. Um, Want to go back to Jody because someone asks, and I quote, "Jody, you were so badass and strong in this film. Tell me about the more physical aspect of it, pushing your body to the limit to get the shot." Uh, wow. I mean, well, first of all, I was pregnant at the time. Wow, so really? That, yeah. Yeah, wow. so that definitely added a level of intensity to it that I didn't even myself anticipate. I mean, I'm used to feeling like, okay, I'm a strong person, I'm an athletic person, I can push my body to the limit to do this, this, and that. And to sort of jump into this and, you know, I kind of have a, a little bit of a, a background in this genre being that I started on a television show on TNT called The Last Ship. That was kind of my first big role on television. And that was all about just, you know, running around, getting the bad guys, jumping in and out of stuff, getting exploded. So I thought, you know, this was something that I was definitely ready to throw my body into, but to sort of add that really unique. And I mean, nobody really tells you what all that your body is going through. And it's so funny because it's like, I've trained for many things in my life, but mm -hmm. what was required of me physically with carrying this baby and doing this film is unlike anything that mm -hmm. I, I have ever experienced, you know? So in terms of what was it like? I mean, it was intense, you know, obviously I worked with a trainer as well. You know, Michael was so gracious to let me borrow his trainer sometimes. <laughs> and, um, I'd like to borrow his know. trainer. I mean, if I can look like Michael B. Jordan, I'd like to <laughs> wow, I didn't know you were alone and not your trainers, Michael. <laughs> even, that man doesn't even need a business card. He can just and I'm like, I was like, oh, Okay, that's, that's you. Yes, please. That's what you're doing? Exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here, guys. Uh, listen, I, 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 I too would like Michael B. Dray, uh, Jordan's trainer as well. <laughs> well <let's>, uh, <laughs> I guess a group class is happening right after this. Oh, oh, let's we do do all going to be on Zoom. Let's do it. <laughs> and, when you see Corey, and when you see Corey, you're going to be like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Well, he's in I was doing that. And then also, obviously, you know, as part of the production, they had us working with these guys on set that were making sure that we were, you know, had integrity with the way that we were moving, the way that we moved as a mm -hmm. team, the way that we were, you know, moving in combat, the way we would use our weapons, the way that we would command each other in, in groups. Because, you know, these are men that are working together all the time to the point where they become a unit, they become like one. And we're needing to emulate this idea that we have been for years living this life and working together. So, you know, it was all of that and just throwing myself into into all of it. And, you know, one thing about Stefano is he really wants to make it look as cool and interesting as possible by having us do as much as we can. And so, you know, I definitely was like, I saw what I was capable of because it was just like, I was working twice as hard. I mean, there's so many things you don't know. I didn't even know I wasn't going to be able to breathe like everybody else. <laughs> Lauren, mm -hmm. why didn't you tell me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I 
I was literally a little bit on the hush, but yeah, no. Okay, Lauren, you should have pulled me to the side when you came. I'm sorry, I know. Yeah, probably you. Yeah, probably you. You know, some things you got to walk through by yourself. <laughs> Everybody's body is different, you know? Yeah. yeah. You handle yeah. that like a superhero rock star. <laughs> so it sounds like badass was actually the correct phrase to use with regards to um, all the yeah. things you're able to accomplish in this mm-hmm. film. Thank you so much for that, Jody. Uh, Brett, I want to kick it over to you. What was it about this evil character that attracted you to the role so much? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I mean, I, first of all, yeah, I've, I've played some not so great guys in the past, yeah. uh, yeah. but this was really kicking it to a whole other level, uh, <laughs> you know, of, of evil and sickness. Um, and, you know, and really, you know, the chance to work with Michael was a huge, you know, it's like, you want to do this with Michael B. Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> absolutely and then also wow. stefano like getting the chance to work with him you know i was just like mm-hmm. such huge fans of both of these guys's work so uh you know it was a no-brainer and uh yeah. not and not too shabby to go to berlin either it's a great city <laughs> no, not at all <laughs> uh, so yeah and <clears throat> Just, he was he's really interesting to me because well I, without giving anything away I mean this is this is a movie where everybody has a very distinct code you yes. know and yes. it's and it's really it's really about willing to die for that code and no matter what that code is and really believing that that's your whole belief system that's your whole mentality that's your whole mm-hmm soul really so to really get into that with uh with this character was just so fascinating to me you know because a lot of the times the bad behavior of past characters of mine it it came out of like a desperation or a deep loneliness and Mm -hmm. that's not like what this guy was coming from it was from a deep belief system that he has Mm -hmm. uh as dark as that is Mm -hmm. and uh and I think, you know, again, without giving it away, it's like, you know, it, it, he also, uh, he's he's a great villain because you not only experience his villainy, but then you ask who the true villain actually is. Yes. And uh, even in the heroes, you know, I think like, it's just a, a beautiful movie of complicated, of mm-hmm. complicated people. And uh, that's what, you know, again, why like, Stefano like brought that out so much because like he said he's not judging any character he's just like letting us exist so there is the the bad and the good guys and the good and the bad guys in a way yeah (laughs) not the good in terms of my character but at least some sort of humanity there that as twisted as it is you you know I hope you can see and uh yeah it was just amazing and then also just getting to to work I mean, really, to be a villain in an, in an amazing action movie, too, is just like a, that's like one of those childhood dream things, you know? Uh, yeah. So uh, it was it was really, it was a, yeah, I mean, I didn't really think about it for too long. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. So it's, no. I'm very grateful to be a part of it and to have yeah. worked with, uh, with Michael and Stefano on this, yeah. No, he definitely goes, um, without giving anything away, as you said, to an unexpected place that I don't think we normally see in a movie like this. So that was uh, fantastic. Thank you for answering that. Uh, Coleman Domingo, this film touches on deeper themes like the lack of trust in the government, how far one would go for their country and revenge. What theme in this film strikes you the most and one you feel will resonate with the audience uh, the most? That sounds like now, it sounds like things we're wrestling with now, right? In every single way. I think, what I love about the film, actually, what attracted me to it was the fact that at the center of Michael's character, you see he's just a man who's trying to do good in the world, who believes in country, who believes in family, who has a, a spiritual core. And then you look at what happens when all is taken away from this person and what they have to do. You know, sometimes, you know, I feel like that's, I don't know, these are the arguments we all have, which is like, what happens when you don't, when you can't play the grace card anymore? Where you're like, that's been taken away from you. And you're like, what do I do to try to right the wrongs in society? 
Um, and what access do I have? What agency do I have? What am I up against? So I think it's just a great moral quandary that we have that's uh, in the center of the film. And I think that's what um, Michael's character and the way he portrays it so beautifully, what, what, what he's in the midst of. And you're like, so you get behind him. You're like, hey, we're just trying to right some wrongs in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> True, that's, we're trying to right some wrongs and this is what we've been dealt and how are we going to deal with it? We're up against the system. So I think it's going to resonate with audiences in very deep and meaningful ways. And uh, who doesn't want a big action film right now? You need to get in there and feel like you, you want to fight good, you know, eat good against evil. You know, it's clear lines. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You really, I think we really need that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there have been so many questions that have come in about training and preparation. And I know Jody kind of walked us through a little bit of what that was like, but but Michael, you know, one question is that there are multiple intense sequences of your character underwater for extended periods of time. Can you talk about the preparation that went into those scenes and how long can you hold your breath underwater? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Right now, I'm just, whew. <laughs> for a whole song. Uh, for a whole oh, that's song. At least, wow. at, at least, at least the song. Um, wow. It's it's uh it's one of those things where, you know, your breath and breathing is definitely an, a a trained thing. It's an exercise. Mm -hmm. So if you if you stop training and you stop exercising that 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 muscle, you can definitely lose it. But you know, underwater uh, training was definitely something that we spent a lot of time in. You know, we knew we had these these sequences. Um, you know, you know earlier in the script development phase, you know, Stefano looked at me and was like, Mike, you know, you got to do all these, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> easy, easy, no problem. So um, we hooked up with some, uh, some military uh, <clears throat> divers and we spent time in the tanks and, you know, put us under stressful situations where we would have to problem solve, uh, mm -hmm. work through malfunctions, uh, gear failure, um, you know, work through military, like rebreathers, which is, you know, uh, 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 basically machines that these uh, uh, soldiers would wear to basically suppress all the bubbles so they could breathe underwater without leaving any like physical traces. And we had to work Heavy as hell. Say it again. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, heavy as hell. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know how many pounds they would weigh, but like they would, they were so heavy. But then you have like a, you know, uh, you know, a flotation bag that you have to like manipulate the pressure of. So you can like, you know, you can have like zero, uh, so you can kind of be buoyant enough to like stay underwater, but not buoyant enough to float to the top. So anyway, it was a lot of, uh, you know, very detailed training that we went through for the water exercises. And uh, yeah, I can hold my breath. You know, during filming for for pretty pretty long, maybe about three minutes or so. Let like me that. tell you, Michael will put this song on. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what the song was, but he would put this song on, <laughs> and the whole time that song was on, I'm looking at this man. He's under the water, just like. Meanwhile, <laughs> 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 well, my eyes, I was so pregnant at that point. I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 and also. When and uh, when uh, after as soon as I say cut, it was dancing. <laughs> I remember I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, I got under the water while somebody was coming. Like he was just like, "Okay, I'm just gonna chill here for another thirty seconds after this." I'm a water baby. I, mean, I, I love being in the water. And honestly, if, you, if you're calm and you're sitting still, you know, you can hold your breath for a lot longer. So like we cre they created an environment for us to kind of like really relax and just kind of like be at peace. So without giving too much away, there's a, there's a moment in the movie, you know, where you see me kind of be at peace underwater. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's the one that everybody's uh, talking about. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm gonna need to know what that song was later, Jody. So, you know, because um, <laughs> I feel like it's a good one. Um, I mean, um, just to add ahead. a little thing from my end, they should call Please. night vision goggles, no vision goggles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my eyes, but like I put them on, but 
run down the hall with the gun. <laughs> and it's just like, I hope I don't hit the walls right now. It was crazy. No, no. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> you know, the director that, that you guys all worked with on this film, as someone pointed out, has a different approach to the action scenes with this vision. It's very difficult to work with a stuntsman. And so for those of you who had to do your own stunts, the question is, how did you feel on set making in your own stunts and what was the most challenging part? Uh, you want me to take this one? All right, I'll take this one. Uh, it was uh, it was fun. You know, I'm a, I'm a little play fiend, you know, a little, a little action junkie. So as a kid, you know, like, you know, just you know, these are the movies that I, that I watched that I always wanted to be in, you know, when I, when I, when I, you know, one day, you know, in my imagination. So the fact that I actually had opportunity to train and, and, and do a majority of my stunts and had an incredible stunt team. And, and, and when Stefano says that he likes, you know, you know, he wants you to do all your stunts. We still work with stunt doubles and and, and, mm. and people who actually vet these sequences and make sure things are safe and teaches and teaches us the proper way that we're able to handle ourselves in those situations. So, you know, Clay and Doug and everybody that was there, they assembled this incredible uh, stunt team that allowed us to train at high intensity that so when we were able to show up on the day, we were able to do the things that we needed to do. So uh, mm. it was... Uh, it was fun, you know, you just, yeah. you know, we, we got banged up throughout the process, but, but uh, it was, it was so worth it. It was worth yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I had never done, I had never done anything that like that before that intense. And uh, I got to say, it was like a real sense of accomplishment, you know, and at the end of <laughs> every take, like, right, Mike, we'd like hug and laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how intense it was. It was yeah. so great. And then like, and then I, you know, and you knew when Stefano was happy too with it. So yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when we're like me. literally hanging on our last leg, then Stefano's like, all right, good job. We're good. We can move on. But <laughs> I, was, I was a real young coordinated kid. I like saw an occupational therapist and stuff like that. So like, wow. when, when Stefano is like telling me great job and Michael's hugging me and telling me great job, mental no. health. Yeah, it was no, like- No, but it's, it's, it's fun because like, you know, when you get to know somebody and you're working with, you know, these stunt guys that, you know, you, you, you build bonds and relationships with and, and, you know, other actors, you know, like, you know, Brett and, you know, Jody and everybody that we're working with, it, it gives you that free reign to actually go that much further, you know, to play that, to play mm -hmm. against somebody that you, you don't like, or you're trying to kill or whatever the case may be. It, it, it actually makes it more fun that, you know, when you're, when you're really close and you like each other, you know? So it, 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 we were all very fortunate in that way that we were able to kind of, you know, you know, act like we weren't cool with one another. And I think it really pulled those, those performances to the surface. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to piggyback um, on that, Kelly, I, it's going to be hard to believe, but um, I have the most difficult stunts of anyone because uh, you know, I have to do a lot of leaning and holding a Bible <laughs> and like just leaning forward and then, you know, sitting, on a, sitting on a desk. I mean, that stuff is really difficult. So, you know, I, I, told stuff, you know, I did not want a double for that or anything. Just let me do it, man. All right. So get out of my way and we got it done. <laughs> oh my God. I, I love that so much. And and honestly, we could we could probably do this for many hours, but uh, but we won't. But I really want to thank you guys um, on behalf of not only the people who are watching this press conference, but really on behalf of those of us who have been stuck at home with nothing to do but watch content. This is yet another fun piece of work that that we get to watch that makes the day go by a little bit quicker. So thank you guys for that. And thank you all out there for joining us. And remember, Without Remorse launches globally on April 30th on Amazon Prime Video and the audio Ooh. files from today's press conference will be made available to you all. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, friends. Good to Come see on. you guys. Yeah, good seeing you, Carl. Brett, you Lauren, too. Jody. Love you, Lauren, Jody. Bye. Love you. Love you. Love you. Brett, love you. Love Jody, you. mess, mess with me what that song was, Jody. <laughs> 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 I have a feeling I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta talk to Michael first. I gotta talk to Michael first. I'm like, 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 I'm like,